Hello, and welcome to Childless Not By Choice. This podcast was created for and about the Childless Not By Choice community on a global level. Before we get started, I would like to thank my sponsors and supporters. Thank you, Morgan Air Conditioning, Sales, Service, and Installation, serving Tampa, Florida, and the surrounding areas. Morgan Air Conditioning can be reached by calling 813-500-7765. That's 813-500-7765. Or their web address is www.morganair.net. That's www.morganair.net. Along with a stellar business reputation in the Tampa, Florida area, Morgan Air Conditioning is also known and well-received for giving back to the community, whether it is back-to-school drives or donating services to the less fortunate. Thank you, Morgan Air Conditioning, for recognizing the vision of Childless Not By Choice and being a part of it. Next, I would like to thank Alba Digital Media for creating my website, www.childlessnotbychoice.net that's www.childlessnotbychoice.net and for producing this podcast. Alba Digital Media's clients include those who need website building and maintenance as well as those like myself who require professional podcast editing. Their client base reflects many industries and levels of needs for professional assistance. To contact Alba Digital Media for your web building and podcast production needs, visit www.albadigitalmedia.com. That's www.albadigitalmedia.com. Thank you, Alba Digital Media, for making me look good and sound good. Finally, I would like to thank Devoted, the musical duo who created my theme music. Thank you, Devoted, for your beautiful music. Devoted has had the opportunity to sing and play in many countries. To contact Devoted for your music needs, visit devotedministries at gmail.com. That's devotedministries at gmail.com. And if you would like to become a one-time or ongoing sponsor, or if you would like to become a patron of Childless Not By Choice, please contact me at Sevilla at sevillamorgan.com. That's Sevilla at sevillamorgan.com for details. Now, on to the show. Well, hello, 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 everyone. Savella Morgan here. Thank you for visiting Childless Not By Choice once again. Thank you to my repeat listeners. And if you are listening for the first time, thank you. I hope you will come back for another visit. I guess I kind of should say now, this is not my normal voice. I have a cold or something. I don't know what it is. I lost my voice for about three days last week and it's barely back, but I want to stay on schedule with the episodes, the second and fourth Monday of every month. So here I am. That is how passionate I am about this platform. I'm just glad my voice is somewhat back instead of not back at all, because then I was what would I do? <laughs> Maybe just play um, an oldie but a goodie or something. Yeah, there's always uh, a chance of that happening, I guess. But I'm just glad it's back in some semblance. But for those of you who've never listened to me before, yeah, this is not my normal voice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and uh, I hope you'll stick with me here. Uh, I just want to, again, welcome everyone. And uh, remember to help me get the word out by telling your friends about the show Feel free to share to your social media followers. I love shares and reshares. So please tell anyone that you know about the platform, whether they have children or not. This is um, this is a way of me getting the word out. That's what this platform is all about, is getting the word out. And to create conversation, to create awareness. And uh, that means that it's not just for those who are childless to listen to, but for anyone that wants to know more about the childless not by choice demographic. So thanks once again for listening and thanks for helping me get the word out. 
Well, my mission is to recognize and speak to the broken hearts of childless, not by choice women and men around the world. I am spreading the great news that we can live a joyful, relevant, and fulfilled life, although we could not, did not have the children we so wanted. That's the whole crux of this platform, is to get the word out about this demographic that hides in plain sight and who sometimes has heartbreaking interactions with people who do not understand what they, we as childless, not by choice women and men can sometimes deal with just in what what would sometimes and for most for the most part seem like a joyful setting family get togethers parties weddings whatever uh, sometimes there is commentary unasked for commentary and and most people w- would miss the commentary and just uh, brush it off as conversation and not realize that they're speaking to somebody who probably uh, cried on their way to the event or will probably cry on their way home or cried yesterday or last week because they are trying to just have a, the right attitude and not come off as a hater. And it, it I, I think it takes a lot of guts. It really does. And I want to commend those who the feelings are, I don't think the feelings ever, I say this all the time, the feelings of being childless and realizing and recognizing that you'll never have a child, they don't really completely go away. But, you know, as you grow older, as as the time between when you realize and recognize it would not happen to you or for you and your current time, the distance helps. I guess that's the point I'm trying to make. Distance helps. Time distance helps. And so we're all in different places and stages in our grieving process as childless, not by choice people. And then there are some people who are really grieving because depending on where in the world they live, the society that they live in, they may have to get a fresh (laughs) reminder every so often. And uh, I know of what I speak. I belong to other groups. I don't just belong to mine. Although I created this platform from a place where I I feel like it's, it's my calling. This is not just a a Facebook group, nothing against just a Facebook group, but for me, this platform is 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 bigger than than that it's This is about me reaching out to hearts all over the globe and making making childless not by choice women and men realize that they're not alone um they're not an island unto themselves, and although they can sometimes be surrounded by some really petty people. Uh, Their culture can be just really, really mean about them not having children. This platform is created for them, and it's created to create awareness for those who have children who many times do not recognize what it is that they're saying. Again, the awareness factor of this platform. And so that's why I have the Facebook groups. It's why I have the community group, which I mentioned and talked all about in the last episode. By the way, this is episode 82. And so in episode 81, I talked all about the the um, community that I had uh, set up, recently set up over on the website, www.childlessnotbychoice.net. And so please, if you are a childless, not by choice woman, please head on over there to the, 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 the community. We've got five groups over there and I don't know, four or five or six forums over there. So even more conversation going on over there than in the Facebook group, Childless Not By Choice with Savella Morgan. And uh, so as I was saying, we have the the Facebook group, Childless Not By Choice with Savella Morgan. We have the Childless Not By Choice Supporters Group with Savella Morgan, and that's also a Facebook group. That's for anyone who would like to learn more about the platform and the community, but maybe they do not fit the demographic because, again, the community and the Childless Not By Choice group with Savella Morgan are just for women and women who are childless not by choice and not women who have adopted or married men with children. This Childless Not By Choice with Savilla Morgan Facebook group is for women who are childless not by choice. 
If you are a woman who has adopted, or you are a, a woman who is childless, not by choice, but married a man with children, there are groups over on the, the uh, community site for you. That's why we set up the community site, because we were running into problems on the, the Facebook group where people wanted to join who had adopted or they adopted after joining. And it was it was becoming a, a little bit of an issue. And the community was the only way to fix that and not make people feel like they had to be r- removed or kicked out or whatever. And that that's why the community was set up. So no excuses now. I can now help you no matter where in the 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 childless not by choice sphere you fall. Uh, the the group over there for those who have adopted. The group over there for those who are step parents. The group over there for those who are only children and childless. And forums. I mean, there's a forum over there for. Those of us who are single and childless, so there, there, there are all kinds of conversations that I have created and set up over there. All we need now is for you to come on over and join the conversation. I want to see my dream for that community is to see conversation going twenty four seven, because the world is awake twenty four seven. When I'm asleep, some of you are awake. It's the middle of the day for some of you, and so no excuses for for feeling that you have nowhere to go and no one to talk to because you're not quite childless, not by choice. The community was set up just for you. So please come on over. When you come over to the the community to the website, www.childlessnotbychoice.net, you will see um, a login tab. You click login and you have the choice of logging in with your Facebook credentials or creating a login ID and password. You have two different ways of logging in. And once you're logged in, then you can get into the community and you can go over there anytime you want to. Uh, You don't have to go over there when I'm there because I'm not always there. I I want you to be able to head on over there. And even if you're the only one in there, post something, say something, respond to a post that's over there now, recommend a book. We have a book, a group just for books about the child is not by choice demographic. And so recommend a book to to others and, you know, get the conversation going is the bottom line. That's what this is all about. Um, So we have the groups, the Facebook groups. We have the, the podcast. We have, what else do we have? Oh, that's what I was trying to remember. We have the newsletter. So the Facebook groups, the community, the podcast, the newsletter. We have at least four different ways for you to join the conversation. Now, if you're in all four, it may be a little overwhelming. It may be a little redundant. There's only so much creation I can make. And the newsletter is a way of just refreshing your memory as to what's going on on the platform. I would love it if you're in all four places. There's nothing wrong with it at all. But if you feel like being in all four places is overwhelming, then, of course, decide what it is you like. Some people are only going to want to listen to the podcast. And that's that's fine. That's understandable. They, they may never reach out to me. I may never know that they're listening. They simply want to listen to the podcast. Some people may not want to join the Facebook group, but they still want to know what's going on. And they want to listen to the podcast and uh, uh, sign up for the newsletter. That's fine. Some people are on the Facebook group and the community, which I, I again, I don't, I don't think I'm going to close out the Facebook group. I see it as a portal, and so many people that are over in the community now started out in the Facebook group. They are part of both groups, and that's fine. Whatever works for you is fine. I just want to, want you to know that the the platform was created for you. It's almost like, I know this may sound kind of cheesy, I don't know, but it's almost like I cannot help myself when it comes to this platform. There are so many times and so many moments when I feel so discouraged, just absolutely discouraged because of the pace that things are going. 
I try not to look at the other groups that have been set up since I set mine up and they may look like there are more people in their groups. I cannot, I cannot let my mind go there because even when I feel like just maybe walking away from it, even for a little while, not, not forever, but even just for a little while, I can't. I, I talk about it. I joke about it and I can't bring myself to do it because I feel like I've been called to do this. And so even during those moments when I just really feel like, you know, why am I doing this? Who's listening anyway? I don't have a million downloads a month like some podcasts. I don't even have hundreds of thousands of downloads per month. I've come a long way in number of do- in average number of downloads, but I keep hearing from the people that know it all that have been podcasting since day one, 10, 12 years ago, to stop counting your downloads, stop looking at your downloads, stop comparing yourself with each other. Something our mothers probably told us when we were little, stop comparing yourself with each other, with other people. You don't know how they got to where they are and what they had to do as far as podcasting goes. You know how many tears they cried before they got to where they are. Stop looking at what other people are doing. And that's what I do for the most part. But it's been three years and I'm like, "Mm, where should I be at the three year mark? And this is just me being real with you. Where should I be at the three year mark? And then I keep telling myself, I, this is, this is a calling for me. So even if just one person listens this month, I've got to be good with that because that one person could have been this close to suicide. They could have been this close to just breaking it off with their with their spouse. A lot of marriages have broken up over this childlessness thing. In a lot of cases, husbands have left because they want children. And in a lot of cases, wives have left because they feel inadequate. And if I can just get one person to listen to my episodes, to the entire podcast, the entire library, and realize, wait a minute, what am I doing? Am I completely breaking up my marriage? Can we do something else? Is there something else that can be done? Can we make it through this? If I can speak to one person and tell you that if the only thing in your marriage is that you can't have children, but your spouse is treating you well, and you have a good life together, but you're allowing the childlessness to get in between you, that, I'm sorry, call me judgmental, but that is not a reason to break up a marriage. It so is not. And I, I've said it in, in previous episodes, that is not a reason to break up a marriage. I mean, you better come with something better than that. If he's treating you well, if he loves you, yes, it hurts that everybody else around you, you know the, the key word, everybody else around you is having children and and you've got to go to all these baby showers because if you don't show your face, you're being a hater and you know, people are questioning your your fertility or your infertility, making you feel bad about the fact that you can't have kids. Um, and you have a good spouse, you have a good husband. Talk to those of us who never met Mr. Right and do not have any children. And we're not getting any younger. And as we grow older, we're going to have to figure a lot of things out because we don't want to end up in a certain place in life where we have no one to care for us or we don't we didn't set up the proper care long term care i've blogged about that before uh long term care what if we do have to end up growing old by ourselves many of us do and will many of us will never meet the right guy mr right and um at this point in many of our lives we're like ah why bother I'm just, you know, I'm just saying, you know, so because you don't want to marry somebody just because you're, you're lonely. I mean, that's not a good reason to marry either. If you are both on the same page, here I go on a tangent. Oh, here I go on a tangent again. If you're both on the same page and you feel like you're both getting married because you're both lonely, I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm not a marriage therapist. I'm not a counselor, but I just don't know if that's going to be enough. I believe that, yes, companionship is a big part of why people marry and get together, etc., especially as we get older. Nobody wants to be old and lonely, but I feel like there's got to be more. I mean, call me a hopeless romantic, but there's got to be more than just that, and I'm not willing to settle for any less. So, 
at any rate, what are your plans for as you get older and you're single as well as childless? And I'm not saying stay together just for that reason, but I think more people need to really think about what they're doing. I think as human beings, we tend not to think long term. We don't think, as I call it, down the street, over the hill and around the corner when we're making our decisions. We're just thinking about how we feel now. And me, 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 me. It's all about me. And uh, I think we need to think more. Just saying. That's my, my word for somebody. But as I was saying, if this podcast just reaches one person, if you feel like uh, four different uh, platforms within this one platform is too much, do what you can. Do what you have to do as far as how how many places you follow me: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest. I have I am big on Pinterest. Thousands of pins on Pinterest, and I love Pinterest. I never talk about Pinterest much, but I love Pinterest. I have a childless not by choice board over there. I have a podcasters board over there, and so I'm big on Pinterest. Bottom line, there are so many different places you can follow this this platform that if you don't want to follow in all places, that's fine. I have some people who follow me in every place, and I, I love it. Thank you. I appreciate it. But do what you can. Do what's best for you. But you can you cannot ever say that you cannot find a place that understands how you feel when I've created this platform. There are just so many places to be within the platform. Anyway, that is not why I'm here today. <laughs> you guys should know me by now. I have to like have a little, you know, soapbox moment before I get started. So that was my soapbox moment. And I will continue. I will have my moments, I suppose, of just wondering, why am I doing this? Who's listening to me? And it's just me, 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 me. But um, it, I get over it real quickly. I'm thankful for the people who uh, continue to to encourage me. I am so thankful for the people that are in my life who who get it, who understand what I'm doing, who understand when I just feel like losing hope and they know when to call me. It's the most amazing thing. These people know exactly when to call. It's really weird. So I just want to thank them. They know who they are because I, I, I tell them all the time. I tell them all the time how thankful I am for them. And they know exactly who they are. So thank you. You know who you are from the bottom of my heart. Anyway, episode 82, Adopt for the Right Reasons. Yeah, it's going to be that kind of show. Adopt for the Right Reasons. Like I said, bear with me, with my voice. I'm drinking water as I speak. I'm going to ask my podcast producer to cut certain things out because I doubt you want to hear me gulping water down. So you won't probably hear it all. But, you know, if I, uh, you know how it, those of you who are podcasters know that we have the ability to cut certain things out. And I'm just so thankful for that. And my next microphone that I buy is going to be one with a mute button. <laughs> I was just hearing about microphones with mute buttons. And I'm like, why don't I have one of those? So in the meantime, my podcasters, my podcast producer is just going to cut some stuff out. But thank you for bearing with me with this voice. I cannot wait to have my voice back. Before we get started, I do want to thank my Patreon, not like we haven't already started, but I do want to thank my Patreon contributor. Patreon contributors are those who have taken an interest in my platform whether they fit the demographic, the childless not by choice demographic or not. They have decided to contribute a certain dollar amount on a regular basis to help fund my dream of creating awareness and conversation for the childless not by choice community globally. Click the Patreon link for details and to become a patron or patron. <laughs> the link is right there in the show notes. It's patreon.com forward slash childless not by choice and people contribute you can contribute a dollar ten dollars twenty dollars 
$50. This is all on a monthly basis. So you are contributing on a monthly basis. I want to thank anyone who, who can do that. Uh, if you want to contribute a million dollars, whatever monthly contribution you would like to make, that will go towards all things platform related. Right now, the uh, patron that I have is Jordan Morgan. Thank you so much, Jordan, for your monthly contribution. My sponsor, and if you look at the bottom of the website, you'll see that there are two open spots there. Those spots are available for sponsors. So if you are interested in sponsorship of this platform, of the podcast, whether one time or ongoing, please get in contact with me and uh, we can talk about it more in detail. My email address is savella at savellamorgan.com. That's savella at savellamorgan.com. And that's in the show notes as well. But I am always open and looking for sponsors. And like I said, if you want to just be a one-time sponsor, that's fine. The sponsor I have now is a monthly sponsor. That's not the Patreon. That's something different. Patreon is something different. I'm talking about sponsorship now. And with the sponsorship money, I pay my podcast producer. I pay my podcast, the the platform that my podcast sits on, Libsyn. All of them have to be paid every month. I pay my website so for my website hosting, all of that has to be paid on a monthly basis. And there are other things that I have planned. I, I need to create some more courses. I need a proper platform for those cor- courses to sit on. And uh, there are other things that I, I really need to do this year. So any contribution you make will go towards those things. Uh, a lot of things, some things I, I don't want to mention because I don't want anybody to get any ideas, but the money will go towards those things. That's what the sponsorship money is for. That's what the, the Patreon money goes for. It doesn't come to me. As I said, I've only doing, been doing this for three years. I'm not making any money off of any of this platform. Any money that comes in goes towards everything I just mentioned and the things that need to be done in this year, which I really believe will happen. It'll happen. Um, No doubt about it. Having said that, thanks again, Jordan Morgan. Thanks again to my sponsors. You heard my sponsorship information in the intro. So thanks again, Morgan Ear. Thanks, Alba Digital Media, for everything you do to make me look good and sound good. And thanks for the intro music that um, that you hear every time, the intro and the outro from Devoted. Thank you very much. So, episode 82, Adopt for the Right Reasons. You know, let me just let me just start because I I I don't want my thought process to get in the way of this. And I'm gonna probably mention what I'm thinking um further down anyway. So let me not go there now. As I conducted the research for this episode, I got to thinking, you know. The decision to adopt is like just about any other decision that you make with forethought, common sense, and planning. There's a decision as to what to have for lunch. That doesn't take a whole lot of planning, Um, unless you're planning a special luncheon, and still, it doesn't take the amount of planning that it would take if you wanted to adopt. You plan what route you want to take to get to a special event. Uh, Again, a little bit of planning, but that should be figured out pretty quickly. But then as life goes on, decisions can become gradually more difficult. Where to live? Should you buy or rent? Should you, you date this person? Should you marry that person? Those take much more research and planning. At least they should. Uh, okay, I won't go there. I won't talk about the 50% divorce rate around the world. Okay, I'll leave it alone. Um, but bringing a child into your life via adoption, how much thought should you put into that? Did you think about the child during the process? The child's personality? The child's racial or ethnic background? Or were you thinking about getting the funding together to complete the adoption? Did you think about whether you should tell the child he or she was adopted? 
especially if he or she was the same race as you, where you, the child may not know? What if you ended up having a biological child? Would you still love the adopted child the same way? How would your family and friends treat the adopted child? Did you think about behavioral issues as the child matured? Would you feel guilt over regretting that you adopted the child? If you were to regret the adoption? When you think about it, it's much like getting engaged and planning a wedding, right? Yeah, I know, I've never been married, but indulge me. Allow me to exercise common sense and the marriages I witness daily. If you are married, did you do any soul searching, marriage counseling, therapy seeking, talking to couples who have been married for a million years before you said, I do? Or did you jump in feet first because it was time? And in either case, soul searching or jumping in feet first, did the marriage still have rocky roads, speed bumps, and brick walls? Or was it smooth sailing? Hint, whether you did the premarital things or not, there will still be rocky roads, speed bumps, and brick walls. But hopefully you married someone who was all in like you. Hopefully you're both all in. Are you all in with the adoption? Okay, I will let you think about those questions. Back to adopting a child. Well, wait. Did you consider the child? Or did you just consider your feelings? The ones that emanate from within as well as the ones society put upon you. You know, like I mentioned earlier, it is just time, and since you can't have one of your own, you will just adopt. I know, by now, some of you are probably mad at me. This is what I was thinking about earlier. Calling me a hater because I did not have a child. You know that one child, that little boy I always talk about? And by the way, I would have been just as happy with a little girl. It's just, I don't know, something always told me a boy. But a girl or a boy would have been just fine with me. But yes, I thought I would have a little boy. I even had a name picked out for him. And every time I think about that name, I'll tell you there's a little pang that comes over my heart every time I think about that name because I just knew I was going to have a child. I just knew I was going to have a boy. And I actually know people who have that name and they don't know. They don't know that I had that name picked out. <laughs> and you thought this childless thing was just uh, easy and why don't you just get over it? There are just so many layers to this. If you have children and you're listening to this episode, there are tons of layers. Anyway, I will also tell you that I attempted to adopt on two different occasions. So you may think me a hater, but I will tell you I never considered any of the above questions I mentioned. I just felt it was time. Husband or not, it was time to have a child of my own or by adoption. Society and my thoughts were weighing on me continually. It was like having an albatross around my neck. There were only two other times in my life when I had an albatross hanging around my neck. Well, maybe three. But the two that immediately came to mind, uh, one of them was the fact that I hadn't finished college for a long time. I've, I've now finished. I now have my master's in, uh, in management with a concentration in marketing. So check mark after that. So happy. It's been a few years now, but I'm just really happy that I finally got it done. The other time was years ago when I was studying for my stockbroker's license and I couldn't pass the exam. It was like, I think, 125 questions and eight hours. They gave you eight hours to take the exam. 
Many of you probably know about the Series 7 and 63. I don't think it's called the 63 anymore, but you know what I mean. They call it the Big Mama Bear exam, and I just couldn't pass it. And when I finally did, I could feel the weight just I could feel the albatross just fall off my shoulders when I finally passed that exam. Oh my gosh. And so many people I didn't even know were paying attention were so happy for me. But it was in those two moments when I just felt the the albatross just release its hold on my neck and just fall off. Well, not having a child is... And was it? Well, it was. It was. Not so much anymore, but it was an albatross around my neck. There was a battle going on. There's a battlefield in my mind constantly. The the conversation in my head, there were many, but some of them were, you know you're the only one who doesn't have a child, don't you? Or people are watching you. And they wonder, what is wrong with you? One of my worst thought battles was, people feel sorry for you, and they're pitying you. (laughs) But there are good thoughts too. I really wanted to nurture and train up a child. I wanted to pour into a child so badly. And I don't think the nurturing aspect really goes away, because that's how we women, 99.99% of us, were created. I wanted to read bedtime stories. I wanted to teach my child how to read, especially since I started reading at such an early age. I wanted to teach my child how to live in and be able to interact with anyone anywhere. I wanted to teach my child class. (laughs) I wanted to teach my child how to handle money because, you know, we all know you can't buy class. I want to teach him or her that love of family was important and love of God foremost. But none of that happened because I never had the child and I never got to adopt. I guess the point is, I only thought about my need to nurture a child. I only thought about how society must perceive me and how they view me even my own friends and family, and how they probably still do. I've heard about comments that certain families have made. I don't know if it's true or not, because they weren't made directly to me. But how do you deal with those things? Husbandless, childless, weird, nonconformist, anti-establishment. You know the establishment get married, have children, and settle down like normal people. And when I attempted to explain that I'd just never met the right man, I would be told to just settle. Yes, I was told by friends to settle. Just take what I can get and get into alignment with society's norms, even if it meant waiting a few extra years for whomever to realize that, ah, let's just go and get married. Then I realized I do not owe anyone an explanation. I am not asking you not to adopt. There are a lot of beautiful children around the world who need love, nurturing, and guidance. I am simply asking you to think about the reasons for your decision to adopt, to consider all aspects of the adoption, to consider the child. And then consider this. What would adopting a child do for you? What would it do for the child? What would you do if you were not allowed to adopt? For instance, if you were turned down by agency after agency, or if you just did not have enough money to adopt, or if the adoption agencies felt like you did not have enough income to support a child, What would be your alternatives if you were turned down? There's a saying here in the U.S., I don't know if they say it anyplace else in the world, but it goes, check your heart. And I'm a big proponent of checking the heart, no matter what it is, whether it's this subject matter that we're talking about or 
the reasons that we do things or say things, check your heart. I am big on the heart because there is a verse in the Bible that says, out of the heart comes what you're thinking. I'm, I'm not saying the, the verse per, um, word for word, but it, it basically means that whatever is in your heart is going to come up out of your heart. It's going to come up out of your heart and come out of your mouth <laughs> or come out of your actions, which is why I always laugh at people who say dumb things and then turn around and say, I'm sorry, just before they're fired and maybe rehired later. You know, people who are in government or whatever, and they apologize for saying something that they shouldn't have said, maybe about a certain group of people. It's like, it's, what is, it's what's in your heart. So why are you apologizing? It's going to come out eventually. I mean, ask for forgiveness if you want to, but, uh, and you know, hey, apologize. I mean, but seriously, it, it was in your heart to begin with. So my point is, check your heart. Why do you really want to adopt? And once you've covered all of those things and you decide to adopt, I wish you all the very best because I'm not a hater. <laughs> and I did try adoption twice. It just didn't work out. And the way I see things, at least in my situation, is it wasn't meant to be. You know, it just wasn't meant to be. If I, I tried adoption twice, and maybe it just, you know, one of the agencies, I've told the story before, one of the agencies, I made an appointment with them, I took time off from work, and this was during my stockbroker days. I took time off from work. I went looking for the agency, couldn't find it. Called the agency, no answer. Finally, turned around and went back home, back to work, actually. And uh, I was just, that was like, I'll never forget that day. I was so depressed. So depressed. And I ended up calling the agency, and immediately the woman answers. And I was like, you know, I, I, I tried calling you. I was out there looking for you. The The street was it's a huge street, lots of businesses. It wasn't that far from where I worked. And uh, I really should have been able to find this place. I knew the area. I worked there for 11 years. But when she answered, I was like, I tried finding you. And I just, I, I couldn't find you. Nobody answered the phone. And she's like, oh, well, <laughs> that was her response. Oh, well. And so I hung up, because if that was her response, imagine if I had had the opportunity to continue with her. Because I've heard the stories. I've heard the stories of certain adoption agencies and and just things that have happened to people and all of that. I don't want to go into it because I'm, I'm not here to try to scare anyone that's adopting. That's not what I'm trying to do with this episode at all. And I'm sure if you are working on adoption, you've heard the stories yourself. So there's no need for me to go into it. But what I'm saying is, for me, it wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be for me to have the child that I wanted. It wasn't meant to be for me to adopt. People ask me if I, I would look at adopting now. And I would have to say no. I don't even see how that could possibly happen. Uh, no. No. I don't see it. And a big part of it is my age, because as far as I know, adoption agencies adopt out uh, uh, on an age ratio. You have to be a certain age. The baby or the child has to be a certain age. It's got to be a ratio. So it wouldn't even be a baby for me. It would be a child, an older child. And I, don't, I just don't see it happening. So the answer is that no, I don't think so. Uh but I, I guess the bottom line is what I really want to just tell or ask those of you who are looking at adoption is check your heart. Make sure you're adopting for the right reason. And again, when the adoption goes through, for those of you who for whom it is meant, I, 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 I'm, I'm happy for you. I really am. I, um, you know, I think it's a beautiful thing. There are tons of children out there that need what they call in the adoption world a forever home, forever home. And so I, 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 I really want to let you know that those of you who are adopting and it goes through, congratulations. I celebrate with you. I'm happy for you. And 
for those of you who for whom it may not happen, it hurts, it's sad, it's painful, but please cons- consider consider the life that you can lead. Whether you're single or married, consider the life that you can lead as a single person. Consider the lives that you can lead if you're married with your spouse. Think about what else you can do, because all of us are put on this planet for a reason. We're all here for a reason. It may not be the reason we wanted or the reason we expected, but we're here for a reason. We might as well make the best of it. And uh, with that, I think I'm done. <laughs> I think I've said a lot. <laughs> if you have any any questions, suggestions, anything you'd like to add to this, please do reach out to me. My contact information is in the show notes. My website, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, everything's in the show notes. And of course, uh, there are a couple of links in there to some uh, places I went to online, adoption.com. I went to one of their forums. And actually, that particular link takes you to uh, the forum that says the right reasons to adopt. And so this is not just coming from me. I wanted to add some additional information in there. And um, there's another one here from Babbel.com. Kind of odd link, but it says Babbel.com, pregnancy, 14 reasons you shouldn't adopt. So again, I am not the one saying it. This is what the link says. And if I find any other links in there uh, uh, or any other links, I'll add them in. And, uh, you know, I hope that that um, I hope nobody's mad at me, but if you are, it's fine. I can I can handle it. Uh, creating this platform has caused me to have a thick skin, or I'm working on it anyway, uh, having a thick skin, because I, I've, I've been confronted by people who feel like uh, I shouldn't narrow my platform down to people who will never have children, to women who have never had children, Or, you know, I've been confronted on several occasions. I've been confronted directly with conversation, and I've been confronted by just being ignored. Um, So that's fine. Uh, People think that it's it's a conversation they don't want to have, and that's fine. But I am strong enough to know that this platform was created for a reason, and no one's going to convince me to stop reaching out to people who are hurting. I mean, that would just be ridiculous. So it's not going to happen. If there is someone out there who just doesn't like what I'm doing, I understand. We all have a right to our own opinion. And that's wonderful. You know, especially in America, we have the right to uh, to say what we want to say. Free speech, they call it. And that's fine. But I know that I created this platform for a reason. I know about the millions of broken hearts out there. I know there are reasons why people say and do the things that they do, whether they're childless or not. It's it's fine. It's all fine. I know that I created this platform to help reach out to the broken hearts out there. I know that there are other childless, not by choice groups out there. Some of them are nuances. Some of them are groups for people who are still expecting to get pregnant. I interviewed a wonderful woman from Kenya about her platform. And so, um, you know, there are all types of nuances out there. This is the one I believe I was called to lead. The one for childless, not by choice women, women who will never have children. However, as I mentioned earlier, I created a, a, a community for those of you who adopted or married into a family with children or whatever else, you know, however else it, it presents itself, I created a gray area by creating the, the community. Uh, me, the black and white person, again, that probably comes from more than a decade of being in financial services where it was either legal or it was not. There was no gray area. <laughs> I had a conversation with that, with somebody on that recently. There, there's no gray area on uh, whether or not you can buy or sell something if you had previous knowledge about the stock before buying it. It's illegal. So I'm very black and white. 
So going over there and creating a a uh, community where all types of childless, not by choice women can come in and commiserate. I think it's awesome. It's, it's stretching me. It's stretching me. I will not go into it now and hear the conversation I had with my podcast producer. I mean, it was, it was an interesting conversation. Let me tell you about this community because I'm just dead set on making sure that the woman who will never have a child uh, does not fall through the cracks. Another blog that I created or wrote a, a while back. I, I never want us to fall through the, the cracks. I just don't. And so that's what this platform is all about. I hope that you don't think I'm ranting. <laughs> I don't think I am. I just really felt like during this episode, I just needed to, to spell a few things out and, um, uh, hopefully it, it, it comes across that way. I hope my, my passion for this platform and for the child is not by choice globally comes across. And I want to just really thank all of you for listening. Thanks to the repeat listeners. And uh, again, if you're a first time listener, thank you. I hope you'll come back. I uh, um, We're heading towards episode 100 full speed and I'm so excited And I'm just thankful to all of those of you who have listened and who've shared and told others about it. I am deeply appreciative. Thanks again for listening to this episode. And until next time, bye.